Beverly Hills, a place of beauty, but we haven't got time to be sightseeing. I need to be on my way, as I have an important mission to embark upon that will need complete concentration. I need to travel the length and breadth of the Beverly Hills superhighways to ensure I complete my mission, leaving no stone unturned, no alleyways forgotten about, no funny misplaced trees that may be hiding a secret dirt track leading to an eventual glorious surprise. Games will need to be chased round the moons of Nibia and round the Antares maelstrom and round Perdition's flames before I give them up. Oh, I need to go to Iceland actually. Need a bag of chips. I've got the car. I've got the weather. I've got a dedicated pair of sunglasses. And the world is my oyster. Time is on my side. Oh, it's getting a bit busy here. Watch where you're going, mate. Should have gone to Specsavers. C64, Spectrum, Amstrad, PC, Amiga, PlayStation 2, Atari ST, BBC Micro. Oh, that was exhausting. It's time to go deep, deep, deep undercover without authorization. Welcome to Beverly Hills Cop. The games. <laughs> Wonder where our first stop will be. But initially, we need to talk about banana, bananas, and how many I can fit into my tailpipe. How could you not notice a man sticking a banana in your tailpipe? You want to stop me? Shoot! And it would seem almost three is the answer. Okay. Everybody's ready for Axel Foley in a shocking pink hoodie and bright blue t-shirt for this calm but confident rendition of the theme tune. The glory days of the spectrum where bright shocking colours were just part of the lived experience and considering how old this game is it's not done a bad job of the theme. The Spectrum version takes us through four key levels. Warehouse. Where you have to struggle to make out who is a box and who is a bad guy, as everyone melds into a bright yellow and black grainy mess, requiring pin-sharp visual acuity to find out what on earth is going on. Car chase. The designers of this game decided it would be a great idea to drive your green car on a green road with green trees and green landscape. But don't worry, the mountains in the distance are blue, which really doesn't help matters at all. Mansion kicking action is provided as you desperately try to hunt down the evil baddie Victor Maitland in a confusing maze adventure with yawnsome action but nice water features. Once inside Mansion, you are treated to an Operation Wolf type view to gun down all the baddies. The baddies just disappear once you shoot them in this painfully slow house hunting adventure. Well, at least Axel looks happy, but he seems to have changed his hoodie which just serves to provide further confusion. Just like this game, really. I really need to warn you before showing this next intro. Prepare for an oral assault of monumental proportions. If you are squeamish, I would advise you to skip this next part urgently. For this is how the makers of the PC version of Beverly Hills Cop would like you to remember the theme tune. Mm -hmm. 
What do you think, Eddie? <laughs> now that's over with, how does the game hold up? Well, we are back in familiar territory with some warehouse platforming adventure where you control the diminutive Axel Foley and have to make it from the far left of the screen to the far right and shoot lots of bad guys. At least this time you can make out who is who as the enemies all seem to be dressed in fluorescent green spandex. The first thing to note is that there is no music. A deathly silence falls upon the doomy warehouse and all you are left with seems to be the rejected sounds of the game Pong whilst you shoot and kick your way through this mindlessly dull escapade. I mean, why does it make that sound when you kick? Why? Axel Foley's clothing choice is still a bit dodgy, as they have just gone for a fix everything with blue combination. But clothes do not maketh the person. So what can we expect from the Amstrad version? It's four levels again, and more effort has gone into this. And I am pleasantly surprised. Now where am I going? Ah, the Amiga. Already I can feel the Beverly Hills Cop vibes bursting through the screen. What a difference a slight upgrade in colour palette and a sound chip makes. I have some better feelings about this game and into the warehouse. Green spandex swapped for efficient all blue suits for the bad guys. Axel Foley looking a little more himself, but not really. Walk along, shoot some carbon copy bad guys, move about a bit, duck. Bit hard to control the directions on this, which means you're often just waving your gun about aimlessly. Half decent attempt at an exciting shoot 'em up platform adventure, but half decent isn't full decent. So it soon becomes a little tiresome, endlessly walking through a fog of boring bad guys and explosions. And again everything is played out in deathly silence. All you can hear are the gunshots and explosions. Not my idea of good mood setting. I am not feeling the film vibes here. My good friend once commented on Beverly Hills Cop as a lot of people getting in and out of cars. Well, I've got into my car this time and it's time to get a little more exciting. Get to drive down roads which had nothing to do with the original film and also you don't seem to be even driving your original car. You're driving Jenny Summers Mercedes. Quite badly, I might say. As the controls are also incredibly twitch, and I'm having incredible difficulty in working out how on earth to steer the thing. You can shoot things by the looks, but I'm not really sure what on earth I am supposed to be doing, and as soon as you go off road, a tiny timer counts you down before ejecting you from the game to try again. No fun. No fun at all. To try different levels, type in Melly at the difficulty selection screen, giving you the chance to sample the different stages. Here I am trying to desperately find my way to the entrance of Victor Maitland's mansion with a confusing array of hedge mazes causing mild annoyance and aggression. Once in the mansion, we're back to the familiar Operation Wolf type shooter affair, if you can ever find anyone to shoot at, and work out the controls enough to actually turn around. 
endless wandering through beige walls and corridors. Not my idea of fun. Not what I was expecting from a Beverly Hills Cop upgraded Amiga version. But, nevertheless, the sound is marginally better than the other attempts. But I still don't know what I'm doing, and I still don't seem to be able to find the enemies or turn around accurately enough. Ah, a bad guy. Now how do I shoot him? Oh, forget this. This is becoming too painful. No, I do not want to replay this game. Thank you. All they asked me to do was drive out of town. But I'm on vacation. Beverly Hills Cop on the PlayStation 2. Instant concern generated. Has no sign of Eddie Murphy on the cover or on the back of the box. But it does boast six huge missions. Wow. The music is in keeping with that 80s feel, I guess. And it does boast those six huge missions, remember? A slight upgrade from the bog standard 4 that we have been seeing so far. And because we are on a PS2, we have the benefit of choosing some vibration antics for our gunplay as I use my pad. Come on then, I am feeling positive. It's a shooting game like Doom and all the other types of first person shooters. Well, I say like the other first person shooters, this isn't exactly giving me a nice vibe. I do not agree with my friend who says Beverly Hills Cop is just a load of people getting in and out of cars. But he has provided supplementary evidence via a YouTube video, so I will provide the link in the description should you wish to peruse. I'm going to have to find a way past that ladder. Okay, difficult decisions may have to be made. I'm not convinced I'm Eddie Murphy in this, but no matter. Let's see what this dreary blue mess of a game has in store for us. This game is as much fun as pouring a pot of paint down your trousers. Ah, mission failed. Wait there, that does not look like Eddie Murphy at all. I guess I'll try again. I'm either too old to be playing games anymore, or this game's difficulty is off the scale. It's not a good sign that it is already causing me some mild frustration and annoyance. Who is that guy? I'm quite sure that's definitely not Eddie Murphy. I think it's time to get in and out of my car and on to the next game. Next stop, BBC Micro Alleyway. I used to have a BBC Micro when I was a wee nipper, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I don't remember having Beverly Hills Cop on it though. Maybe my parents thought it would be too exciting, or too violent for me. Notable absence of any theme tune happening with this game. Just a random teaser of what you can be doing if you decided to play this game. Looks like fun, let's give it a go. Unfortunate clothing decision made again, as Axel is choosing to wear warehouse yellow for his t-shirt. And for some reason, the bullets are also yellow. I think I've had my fill of warehouse levels. Endlessly walking through warehouses, shooting bad guys, does not always make a good game. Oh no, Jenny's been captured. She's being held at Big's place? Who on earth is Big? It's supposed to be Victor Maitland. Big? Well, they've got the license. They've got the name Beverly Hills Cop. They even use the right name of Jenny. But who is Big? 
Make your infuriating way towards Big's place to find Jenny, walking past huge tomatoes and other random decorative plants. Why has Axel's trousers got red stains down them? Has he been involved in an unfortunate tomato incident? Once you have made it through that awful maze adventure, you're back into Big's place, I guess. Another confusing mishmash of blue and yellow corridors to find random bad guys in, which when confronted seem to look more like blue and yellow aliens. No music, drab and dreary atmosphere, and not really how I would choose to enjoy myself on a Saturday afternoon. But this is how I like to spend my Saturday afternoon. What other systems can we find? Where will these roads take me? Hold up, it's the C64 Super Highway ahead. Can the C64 save the Beverly Hills Cop franchise all by itself? Well, at least you get to choose your levels. And do take note that there are five levels on this version, not four. Why five? I don't know because maybe five is better. Ooh, treated to an isometric driving experience. I have no idea how to control this car. Bear in mind I am a little compromised as using an emulator for this. However, you should still be able to turn left and right, although there seems to be no animation for this. Terrible. Let's move on to our familiar friend in the warehouse. It really must be a challenge to make a warehouse level exciting. And I can tell you now, this version has not made it any more exciting. There are random barrels that keep moving towards you amongst the mishmash of bad guys shooting at you. And sometimes people just seem to burst into flames at various points of the game. Once your energy is depleted or when a barrel hits you sporadically. Do you know what? I'm absolutely sick of warehouses now. I never want to see another warehouse in my life again. Oh come off it. Another driving level. And where are we supposed to be going here? This looks just like the dirt track part from the end of Paperboy. Don't remember this in the film? Utterly, utterly baffling. Clunky controls and horrific crash detection. You will not have fun on this level. Trust me. Ah, the famous Mr. Big or Mr. Maitland's Garden Adventure. Those statues are a bit risque for a Commodore 64 game, aren't they? Well, Axel has swapped his shirt yet again for the pristine yellow for this maze adventure that you are required to torment yourself through to get to the ultimate Maitland interior design house shooting adventure part. But you may not make it that far as you twist and turn your way through frustrating dead ends, long laborious walks across freshly cut grass whilst mild mannered bad guys take constant pop shots at you. I never thought I could endure such high level of frustration in a game until now, but I have. It also doesn't really help that I'm not really paying attention to where I've been and where I'm supposed to be going, which is making this a lot more difficult for me. Why aren't I paying attention? I'll tell you why, because this is boring and dull and whatever other word you can think of for extreme pain.
please, can the shooting adventure save this game? We're back in Maitland's mansion with a smorgasbord of delightful corridors and doors to endure until you can make it to find where Mr. Maitland is to rescue your good friend, Jenny Summers. I imagine back in the day, something like this could have blown both of your socks off with these graphics. But graphics do not make a game. It's still got to be fun. And whilst it is some mild fun for a short while, admiring the pink, grey and blue walls of this mansion, there doesn't seem to be a wide variety of bad guys. And I am not picking up a real Beverly Hills Cop vibe with this. It soon becomes a mind-numbing blend of walking, door opening and shooting until you have topped up your frustration tank to bursting point as you struggle to find where on earth Victor is. So you just give up and switch off. Well, I did. You take all the time you need. Please be my guest. But I'm not being a guest of Mr. Maitland's or Mr. Big's mansion. I can tell you that right now for free. Well, I feel my journey is almost over. Surely there's no more games to discover. It must almost be time for a coffee with a bit of lemon twist. No, don't be stupid. But what's that in the horizon? I also used to have an Atari ST when I was much, much younger. And again, never had this game as part of my Atari ST collection. I was too busy playing and enjoying the antics of Buggy Boy and trying to hack into the game. Leisure Suit Larry, which took me an unnecessary amount of attempts. I'm not sure if I would have enjoyed the Atari ST version of Beverly Hills Cop, but I am sure I would be very impressed that at least Axel Foley was wearing the right clothing in the right colour scheme, and that would have been hugely pleasing to me. I'm sure. An essential carbon copy of the Amiga version, so I will leave it up to yourselves to have the age-old debate of which machine was better. I had both at one point, but always preferred the Amiga, if I'm to be brutally honest. But, for the purposes of this review, it is here to show the full range of Beverly Hills Cop games, and the full range of Axel Foley's clothing and colour combinations. It's the same game essentially. Same levels, same bad guys, same driving stage, same mansion, same mazes, same warehouse, same. Does being the same make it better? No, it makes it the same. Still mildly interesting for historical purposes, but I think my younger self is happy that he did not have to endure the game, and probably had a lot more fun with Buggy Boy, and that's how the history books should remain. Where to next? I know a great place that's filled with more games. It's nice. Trust me. You damn right, wise ass! <laughs>